military has always been an honored and cherished part of American culture. We hold the soldiers in the military in high esteem and treat them as heroes. Unfortunately, despite the military's revered status, there is a black mark on their record when it comes to the inclusion of women in the Army. As of today, female soldiers are not allowed in direct ground combat. Today, I stand in firm affirmation along with my partner to appeal the rule that bars women from direct combat positions in the military. I will be taking the argument point by point with the hope that you will join my partner and I in our support of the repeal of this rule. I will begin by introducing what the rule inherently entails. This rule inherently prevents women from combat situations, as I said. According to the Defense Department report in 2011, women are prohibited from being assigned to any unit smaller than a brigade whose primary mission is direct combat on the ground. This means that women are not allowed to direct combat and instead are placed in support roles. A typical patrol, according to the National Defense Research Institute report, has a military official describe it as this. We send seven soldiers at a time to patrol the base for force protection as perimeter guards. That included women. There, are, there were also female medics there on the medical team, and there were big female signaliers who provided general support to the brigade to provide connectivity. So jobs like medics, signaliers, and other logistical support roles are the positions women are placed in because they are excluded from the other ones. How do we propose to fix this problem? We propose that this rule be repealed to allow women to direct combat. This must be done because the rule is outdated and its repeal is inevitable. My first minor point addresses the uh, obsolescence of this rule. According to the Army website in 2009, they hold that the role of the Army has changed and evolved tremendously throughout the years. Female soldiers are strong, patriotic individuals who have served as leaders, role models, and mentors. Because the role of the Army is evolving and changing, it should change in a way to allow women in the Army to make a more modern military machine. On top of this point, many sources say that bringing women to the into combat positions is an, is an inevitability. In a 2007 article, Roles for Women in the U.S., Michelle Norris says women are slowly making strides to full access to jobs in the military. She writes, in the early 1990s, Congress lifted the ban on women flying combat aircraft and serving on combat ships. And during the first Clinton administ administration, then Secretary of Defense, Les Aspen, announced new rules and policies that opened more military jobs to women. We have also seen my other minorities make strides to repeal outdated rules. A CBS News report from 2011 said Congress recently stripped the Don't Ask, Don't Tell ban on gays serving openly in the military, and the Navy changed its rules over the last year to allow women to serve on submarines for the first time. As the military becomes more inclusive, women's inclusion in ground combat cannot be far behind. And finally, according to the same CBS News report, Defense Secretary Robert Gates confirms that he expects women to be let into special operations form, forces eventually and in a careful and deliberate manner. My first significant claim is that women should be allowed to defend their country to the fullest extent. I will support this with two minor points. First, women are already in combat despite the rules. In the 2011 CNN report in which, the Mike, Mullen, in which Mike Mullen, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of, Chiefs of Staff, stated, I know what the law says and I know what it requires. But it, I'd be hard-pressed to say that any wo women who serve in Afghanistan today or who <coughs> served, in, served in Iraq over the last few years did so without facing the risk of their male counterparts. Administrators also do not keep women out of combat. Lauren Manning of the Women's Research and Education Institute in 2011 said that military officials have employed terms of art to skirt the ban. For example, attaching women to a combat unit instead of assigning them. Basically, women are already in combat without official acknowledgement. Secondly, women have earned the right due to be in direct combat and have, and have to have those sacrifices addressed. In the 2001 book, Women in Combat, Civic Duty or Military Liability, Laurie M. Fenner and Mary D. Young speak about women in the Revolutionary War. Although we have evidence that women fought in even earlier conflicts, these armies saw more women march the colors as revolutionary ideologies called, called for all persons to participate in the fight for political liberty. We can further look at the contributions women have made in the Second World War, as they have supported the war effort at home in factories and, cheered, and were cheered on by Rosie the Riveter's mantra, we can do it. My second significant claim states that this rule prevents the military from defending American values effectively. I'll support with three minor points. First, America values diversity, and this rule prevents the military from using this value for the benefit of its strength. Linda Bird Frank, in, in the 1997 book, Ground Zero, found that our service members come from and must relate to an increasingly diverse society. They must work within a diverse military 
an increasingly complex interagency study. Basically, because the military works around different people, they need to be properly exposed to as much diversity within the military as possible. For those who question any lack of diversity, Linda Brickrank also found that minorities and women still lag behind white men in terms of number of military leadership positions. And if the rule is not repealed, there could be consequences. For instance, the same author found, we will do our military members a huge disservice because it's because of our narrow thinking, we do not give them the best training and tools for operating in a diverse environment. They need the training, co-workers, and leadership to meet and match the global environment that continually affects our national security. My second minor point addresses that American value of equality being represented in the, in the military. I would like to make it clear that the affirmative is not saying that women should be simply thrown into combat for equality's sake, but they, they should be given the opportunity to be found capable of it. The official homepage of the United States Army preaches the idea that many equal employment opportunity offices throughout the U.S. have planned events in recognition of women's equality day, but they do not show this support for equality in their policies. Repealing this role would allow the military to truly mean this statement. Also, creating equality in the homeland would help us spread it to other countries around the world. According to the Army's homepage, we bring, we bring distinct perspective to those countries who have limited contributions by their own women. We demonstrate how positive it is, it is to use all your nation's assets to be wildly successful. The U.S. needs to lead by example, showing our support for equality could lead women in other less than ideal situations to rise up and take what is theirs. Finally, let us look at this from an outside perspective. The U.S. has not been doing well in the public relations department. It needs to show that it is not a hypocrite and that can practice what it preaches. This could be an endearing act in the eyes of the countries around the world who may have doubted our choices in the past. For all the points I have said, I hope that you stand behind the affirmative in support of the repeal. And with the help of my partner, we hope to, solidify, we hope to help solidify your stance tonight against the existence of this rule. Thank you.